time for part two, the power supply. I'm Alex, welcome to the Renaissance Builder. Okay, so welcome back to this several part, I don't know how many there'll be, but welcome back to the several part series about building this here computer, and we're on to the power supply. Now I chose this power supply for a very specific reason. One, be it, I just said a specific reason, didn't I? And then I said one, and whatever. So I guess several specific reasons, uh, but they all kind of wrap up into the same thing. The computer, the long-term project for this computer is to be something of a small form factor. It's going to, well, it's gonna be custom similar to our oil-filled computer idea. I don't think I'm going to use oil this time, However, I do want to have a small hermetic space. This is in fact the most powerful, reliable, small form factor power supply I could, I'm gonna say easily get my hands on. Now it is a, it is a pretty good power supply, mind you. What do we got? What's the, it's platinum. So 80 plus, 80 plus platinum rating, which the platinum refers to its efficiency. What that means is it's getting closer to actually providing the amount of power it's using. So we can actually get closer to a stable 750 supply uh, to the actual components. Now, why did I want the most powerful unit? Because I completely intend to overclock both the GPU which is overpowered itself, and the processor, another overpowered item. So we're going with two of the most, two of the core components in this computer, both significantly overpowered for, you know, an average computer, and both are going to be overclocked as much as I can push it. And I want to be sure that I have enough power to do so. So that's why we've got this power supply. Cool. So that being done, let's go ahead and get into this uh, power supply. Power cable, like we don't have enough of those, and modular cables. Now, in this instance, ooh, here's something nice. Velcro wire straps for, for you know, wire management and all. Uh, here's something unique to this power supply. This is a bracket that they give you, since this is a small form factor power supply that quite often gets installed in a, like you can use it, it works perfectly fine in a, in a normal case, but in a normal case it's too small, like the layout is too small for the actual mounting, so they give you an adapter bracket. So you screw it to this and then this screws in place. Now the cables, cables I definitely wanna talk about. So this is something that's new to me, at least. Uh, is modular cables. I can actually choose which cables I use. Things are moving into, in this day and age, well, they already are, in a realm of we want things to look good. You know, cases are transparent or just dead open. Uh, so we want the wires to look good as well as every other component. So that's the point of the modular power cables. Uh, not only do we not have to have extra, so if I don't need the cable, I just don't use it. I don't plug it in. And the cables that I do plug in have this, uh, they're braided and they're all, all black. So it's much more aesthetically pleasing, I guess is what you would call it. So yeah, modular power. Holy cow, this thing is small. This thing is tiny. I mean, for a 700 watt power supply, this thing is tiny. 750 watt power supply. We're talking, if I wanted a power supply, this thing is the sign. I got this. 250 watts. 250 watt power supply. 750 watt. 246, more than three times as powerful. Almost half the size. Like this is, this is impressive. This is honestly impressive. I love it. So I guess, uh, so what's going on here is 
these plugs right here, I mean, you, you obviously, you know, your standard 110 input right here and then your switch, you know. Uh, on this side is all your plugs. This is what makes it modular. So if I want a three pin or a six pin, I can plug it in and use it. If I don't want it, I don't have to plug it in, which means I'm only gonna have the cables that I actually use plugged in here. Now that's significant in this build because I purposely used M.2 accessories here so that I would not need to run any more cables than necessary. That being said, let's go ahead and mount this sucker up. Check this out. A little trick if you're using the, uh, if you're using the iFixit kit, there's magnets on the corners, right? So you can completely flip the thing over and continue using it as a screw tray. How do you like them apples? So we mount this here, bracket up. All right, now I'm gonna set this aside and bum Thor, always falling over. You'd think the guy was like drunk or something. All right, now I'm gonna see if I can do this. So again, we put the adapter bracket on so that it sits in here and just, ta-da, beautiful. Now I'm gonna take the screws that came with the, the case and we're gonna put a screw right here. There's actually many holes that line up here. Whenever you're mounting something up and you have options, like many holes to choose from. Your best option is always the holes that are most spread out. And that's because of weight distribution. It's not much to it. Power supply, got it mounted in here, use the adapter. Now, I turn the case around, the case, I turn the contraption around, and there it is. I can just plug all my cables right into the back there. Easy peasy. Beautiful cover girl. Am I allowed to say that? Be copyright strike because I said that on my channel. So the cables that I will be using, I'm not a hundred percent sure yet, but I do know that you pretty much always need your 24 pin which is the big honker right here. So you pretty much always need your 24 pin. Uh, that one's just pretty hard to get around, which is uh, your motherboard power supply, right? So one thing you can do uh, as far as cable management is there's a thing they call training the cables. Like they use the wire they use in this thing. So the sheathing might be braided, but the wire that they actually use is, is still, you know, it's copper wire. It's not that flimsy. It's not like they're using silicon wire. So I'm gonna go ahead and start plugging some of this in. I might have issue with my cables being long enough. Well, that would suck. <laughs> ha! Modified! So, in conclusion, the Corsair power supply is pretty awesome. I don't see any negatives to it. I think the thing's great. It's, they're, the short cables are intentional. When they designed this power supply, they had small form factor cases in mind, and small form factor cases you don't even want long wires because then you just got to do something with them. So they they shipped short wires with it on purpose. Um, the I mean the wires are high quality braided insulation. They're they're great wires. It's simply a matter of application. That's all this is. So if you are going to need longer power supply cables, I mean I have two things I can do here. One, I could either modify the chassis, which <laughs> already did <laughs> and two I could get cable extensions or if you are not going in a small form factor case then get a decent power supply I mean a decent this one's perfect this one's great but get a a normal size power supply and it will come with longer cables ergo no problem 
Uh, so literally, this is just a, a problem of my own creation of, you know, what we're trying to do here. That's all it is. Uh, so I already, you saw, I already modified the tray, moved it down closer. I flipped the power supply so it brings everything closer. Now I have, you know, some options. I, I think, I really think I can probably, depending on where the connectors need to be, uh, I think I'll be all right with this. We can make it work. Uh, I might even modify this thing even further, uh, putting holes, pass-through holes in the back of the tray or in different places to get uh, to get the power cables through. I, I don't see any reason why that can't happen. So that, that'll probably happen. That's it on uh, the power supply. It's it's great little piece. I mean, things have come so far in the past many years. So if you like this video, go ahead and hit a thumbs up in there. Actually, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up. Please, hit a thumbs up in there. It really, really, really helps out the videos. Like, when YouTube sees more, you know, likes on a video, then they're more willing to, pro you know, promote the video, which would really help because my numbers are really low right now. So, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, please throw a thumbs up on the video. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that bell icon for further future videos. The next thing we're going to tackle is the motherboard. So we're going to be putting the motherboard together and then putting it on. I'll probably, you know, get it up here to put the standoffs in the right position and figure out where wires are going to go. But you put the motherboard together first, then you put it on. So that will be actually very interesting. Uh, and that will be a much more in-depth video as far as, you know, some of the techniques and stuff that you put into building a computer these days. So make sure you're, uh, you stick around for that. Uh, this, is, this is coming together nicely. Um, I really appreciate you guys, your time and watching these videos. I really appreciate your support. If you'd be, if you want to support this channel further from an imminent collapse, financial failure, <laughs> head on over to patreon.com. Look up the Renaissance Builder on patreon.com and uh, you can, you know, throw in a, a subscription and there would really, really, really help out. Uh, and as always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you very much, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good night. Bye-bye.